welcome to worship. It is good that we can share worship together. This week, we welcome the Reverend Cathy Barrable from St Margaret's and St Mary's Episcopal Churches and Frank Smith from St Mary's Newport as part of our worship team. Today is the fourth Sunday in Lent, when the church traditionally breaks the dreariness of Lent and this time of year to celebrate Mothering Sunday. Let us pray. Come, Mother God, come as an enabling, strengthening force. Come as tough love to let us go. Come, Father God, come as an enfolding, nurturing presence. Come as steadfast love to hold us. Come, our parent, God, come as friend and comforter, healing our wounds, walking our way. Come as wounded healer to make us whole. Amen. People of God, believe this. God loved the world. God loves the world. We are the beloved. May the truth of this great love story shine through our worship today and renew our sense of calling. So come with your tiredness, your frustrations and your discouragements. Come with your doubts, your fears and your longings. Come to discover yet again how Jesus reveals God's love and mercy. Come in friendship to God and to each other and in friendship to the world to listen for God's word to us, to offer our prayers and to renew our calling. And so let us offer to God our prayers of adoration. Let us pray. Hidden God, we worship you. By ourselves we could not know you. No human wisdom can discover you. No enterprise reveal you. In the wealth of its knowledge, the world fails to find you. But you came to search for us in the frailty of a human life. You trusted yourself to the fragile faith of wavering disciples. We praise you that in our very weakness we can know you, that stumbling blocks become stepping stones and the foolishness of the cross, the very truth that quickens us to life. God of the turning tide of eternal compassion and comfort, change us so that the energy of your forgiveness flows into bold and joyful action into humility, which is not defeatism, into the strength and confidence to be vulnerable and available to a world in need. Loving God, you father and mother us all our days. Even before we acknowledged you, you loved us. You laboured to bring us to birth, new birth, and how joyful for you was that birthing. In the secret places of our lives, you nourish us, offering us the feeding that we need to grow as human beings. No matter how often we desert you, you never turn away from us, and your abiding concern is always for our good. You weep for us, you laugh with us, you rejoice in our successes and are in anguish at our pain. Loving, mothering, fathering God, Strong and tender, tried and true, we worship you today. And now we pray aloud in the words of your Son and our Saviour, who taught his disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who is in heaven, holy be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory, now and forevermore. Amen. A reading from Ephesians, chapter 2, beginning at the first verse. As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world 
and of the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. All of us also lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our flesh and following its desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we were by nature deserving of wrath. But because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ, even when we were dead in transgression. It is by grace you have been saved, and God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus, in order that in the coming ages he might show the incomparable riches of his grace expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourselves, it is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast, for we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. The Gospel according to John, chapter 3, beginning at the first verse. Now, there was a Pharisee, a man named Nicodemus, who was a member of the Jewish ruling council. He came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one could perform the signs you are doing if God were not with him. Jesus replied, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. How can someone be born when they are old, Nicodemus asked. Surely they cannot enter a second time into their mother's womb to be born. Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water and the Spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the Spirit gives birth to spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying, you must be born again. The wind blows from wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the spirit. How can this be? Nicodemus asked. You are Israel's teacher and you do not understand these things? Very truly, I tell you, we speak of what we know and we testify to what we have seen, but still you people do not accept our testimony. I have spoken to you of earthy things and you do not believe. How then will you believe if I speak of heavenly things? No one has ever gone into heaven except the one who came from heaven son of man. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the son of man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes may have eternal life in him. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already, because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. This is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but people love darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. Everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for fear that their deeds will be exposed. But whoever lives by the truth comes into the light so that it may be seen plainly that what they have done has been done in the sight of God.
I greet you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. May we experience real happiness as we share a part of Mothering Sunday together. Today, joyfully, we are reminded that we are extraordinarily rich in grace. Did you know that? Do you experience it? Do you expect it? Do you trust it? This means that the world, this moment, time we live in, relationships and choices, our shortcomings, worries and concerns can be guided, shaped, reshaped by God for our good. It is a friendly universe. The Christ light is steady at our center. We are the means of empowerment to co-create with God, transforming our challenges and circumstances into joy, gentleness, peace and love. We all possess mothering qualities. It's not those of us who have given birth, because we all give birth. Relationship-based, empowering, protective, loving qualities. I'm talking also about birthing ideas, dreams, visions, making contributions in the workplace, career, and beyond self into interests and vocations, broadly into platforms of human endeavor. Could you name your children, your babies in your life? And as Christians, let us ask ourselves if they have been allowed to grow up fully to develop in that by the hand of God, which holds our hand. Perhaps right now is the moment where you can commit your relationships and pursuits and indeed your very life to Jesus. This lockdown worldview has stunted us in some ways. But let's step into and occupy the spaces where it has been working and develop them so that we, some of us aged and wise, um, are somewhat confused by it all, can combine with the children who are innovative and techno-based, that we can learn from them, they can learn from us, and together we make the world a better place. Nicodemus is an example of someone who, by worldly standards, has really made it. He's respected, he's learned, he's articulate, steeped in reason and wisdom, and probably brought up on scriptural teachings. A leader of means, power and status has gravitas, as we would say. We know and are shown lots of people like that and also the wannabes and those who have been cast aside. All of that is not enough to answer the deep questions that lie within each of us, personal questions. Ones that we don't even really want to tackle. Ones that we block out. So unobserved under the cover of darkness. Nicodemus travels, moves to Jesus, is called to Jesus called to Jesus. I'm sure Jesus was waiting for him. And we never know when that moment of being called is, or when somebody is going to be called to seek out our counsel. Some And this encounter could lead to a change, a seminal change in your life. Let's seek Jesus out now. In fact, he waits. We call this process, prayer. We call the aha moment, the moment in which an insight is gifted to us, graced by grace. We're led caringly and simply into truth, love, joy, solace, and exploration into every encounter. The internal and the external dark patches we experience right now is an invitation to step into the light of Christ. How would we know the outcome of Nicodemus's visit to Jesus? We hear nothing of him, except that 
He, with Joseph of Arimathea, is the one to take Jesus, his mangled body, off the cross and take him to a decent burial place. And from there, we know the story of resurrection. You and I need to allow the answers that Jesus gives us in our dark places, in our covered up areas, to be transformed into resurrection and the flowering of spring as we witness around us. Darkness and light are part of our life. So let Christ come into that darkness. Jesus will never let you down. What about Mothering Sunday then? Like Nicodemus, I often don't have the courage to face the divinity of Jesus and ask, as I am trained, restrained and traditional. And now, after a year, Scottish enough. My prayer is that I might listen and empower and allow my children, you, and those of my flesh and blood as well, as Mary did, to ask uncomfy questions, to dignify the questions that are asked, to hear what they do not say, to complete the story. This is how we move forward. Christ is my ongoing light. May each of you who birthed new ideas of Christ feel the joy of Mothering Sunday this year. In the words of Ephesians, let us rejoice and give thanks that we are God's work of art, created in Christ Jesus for the good works which God has designated to make our lives as children of God. We are God's work of art. What a thought to end on. So from one work of art to another, I say, thank you, Jesus, that you came and that you have listened to us now. And may you be blessed. Amen.
Mothering Sunday, the 14th of March, 2021. On Mothering Sunday, we give thanks to God for our own mothers and for his loving parenthood. Let us rejoice that we are all brothers and sisters in God's family. Through the prophet Isaiah, God said, As a mother comforts her child, so I will comfort you. Let us therefore bring before God all those in need of comfort. Let us pray. Creator God, come with your generous care into our homes and to, to all the homes of this community. Bless the mothers who are careful for so many needs and refresh them when they are weary. Look for mercy on those homes where love is threatened by poverty in these straitened times. Support and strengthen the parents who struggle to provide for their children. We pray for those areas of the world which, as well as the COVID pandemic, are torn by conflict. May God inspire all people to abandon violence and seek lasting peace. By the Holy Spirit, who came to Mary, bring peace and goodwill among all nations. We ask you also to save and defend all who are put in authority that they may always keep in mind that true power lies in service, not in domination, and that we may be godly and quietly governed. Loving God, as a mother teaches her child, may your church have wisdom and courage to teach others about your love by word and example. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops, priests and deacons, and especially to your servant Ian, our bishop, that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth your true and living word. We pray for parents unable to feed their children because of this Covid pandemic, war, disaster, or the greed of others. Soften our hearts and strengthen our wills to work for change. Have mercy on the homeless, the refugees and the wanderers of this damaged world and grant them secure shelter. May governments and other agencies work towards providing shelter and dignity. We most humbly beseech you of your goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succour all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness or any other adversity. We pray for all expectant mothers. May they be especially blessed during their weeks of waiting and be rewarded with the joy of new life. We pray for families divided by bitterness or tragedy. May God's healing spirit enable them to strive for healing, reconciliation and future harmony. Giving thanks for those who have been like a mother to us, we remember all our loved ones who are now re reunited with you and waiting for us to share your glory. Almighty and ever-loving God, as you call us, you children, and love us with a mother's love, we bring our prayers to you in confidence through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. As always, it's been a privilege to share worship with you. This week, may we walk as children of the light, children of the day, in all goodness and righteousness, 
knowing that the peace of God will always be with us. And now a blessing. Blessing and laughter and loving be ours, and the love of a great God, who names us and holds us while the earth turns and the flowers grow, this day, this night, this week, and forevermore. Amen.